Hello everybody and welcome to The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. I'm Alexander Williamson and today we're going to be talking about jackfruit leaves. Yes, they make great panda, dog, or cat ears if you have long hair and or a headband. But no, that's not what we're talking about. Today we're going to be talking about how they have been utilized for their medical benefits and their nutritional profile for over 10 thousand years by cultures around Southeast Asia, India, and the Pacific. So let's talk about how this little leaf can come in handy in your aquarium. It is both a medicinally powerful leaf and a nutritionally powerful leaf that also provides habitat, decor, and a very cool look to your aquarium as well as tannins and acidity that you may want if you keep tropical fish. Because it's not as well known as things like alder cones or uh, catapa leaves, Indian almond leaves, it's still quite a bit cheaper as well and it packs far more punch than the Indian almond leaf ever could. So let's jump in and talk about this incredible, incredible botanical additive you can use in your aquarium. All right, everybody. So the first thing I want to point out about this plant before we dive into the human history and how humans first learned about this plant and unlocked some of the incredible uh, benefits that are found within the leaves of this plant, I just wanted to show you guys that it is in my opinion, one of the very best plants out there for your aquarium. In that the dried leaves last an incredibly long time and they grow biofilm for multiple generations. So that was a little goby there, a stiphodon goby, eating algae and biofilm off of this leaf, which has actually grown pretty thick uh, old age algae now. And this has been in the tank for months now. And yet again, you can see that the siphodons, well, they were swimming around it. The snails are swimming around it. They have a preference, that's for sure. Uh, I've put in over a dozen different botanicals that I've gotten from Aquatic Arts. And by the way, I do uh, support them. They are a sponsor of the channel in the sense that I get a small percentage of each sale. And a lot of times that's where the gift cards I give out as prizes that's where it comes from so if you want to get the discount on these uh, you can find them a lot of places online but one of the best spots to find them because they're hundred percent organic no pesticides used and they're food grade trees is from aquaticarts.com use the code in the description below sometimes it changes but at the moment it is history secret one five all caps no spaces and you'll get fifteen percent off your entire purchase of critters or botanicals, hardscape, inverts, plants, you name it. I love that company for so many reasons, but let's get back to the fruit. So, jackfruit leaves I've been trying out in aquariums for quite some time now. And before I made a video, I wanted to make sure that the things I read were actually true. I wanted to stick them in an aquarium that had acidity at 6.2, 6.4 pH, and see how they lasted. And that was the other aquarium. <laughs> this aquarium's closer to 5.0 pH because it's loaded with every tannin that Aquatic Arts carries. Now, they have a few other leaves that can stand up durability-wise, like the jackfruit leaf, or as the Malays called it, jackfruit leaves. And that would be the cinnamon leaf, as well as the Indian almond leaf kind of. So let me show you the Indian almond leaf right now that's the same age. So it has fallen apart a bit and it might be that the shrimp like it more. It might be that it was a small, young, immature leaf in there rather than a ginormous, uh, you know, foot-long katapa almond leaf. But it's pretty clear to say that the almond leaves are gone. Those are almond leaves, those two there, and these are the jackfruit leaves this being about a week old in here. 
and this being a brand new leaf. So you can see, they actually kind of come in this off red color, they come in a yellow color, they come in a light brown color, and so you can actually make leaf litter across your entire aquarium that looks really natural and really pretty uh, without really staining the water too much either. So you can see here in this uh, hill stream type tank from Southeast Asia, it's like a flooded field slash hill stream tank uh, where they would meet. And you can see again, I've got a big old jackfruit leaf right front and center, and I've got the one down there in the substrate, as well as others that are actually buried really well under the substrate. And the stiphodons, which are algae and biofilm exclusive eaters pretty much, they will actually dig through the substrate so that they can munch on those leaves. And they choose those leaves over others. And these leaves have held up and they still look about like they do when you buy them for several months. So they're a really good value in that sense. And, you know, even up in my little betta nursery, there's these leaves back on the other side too. And the bettas love them too. So I've tried them with all sorts of fish. Over, over 30 or 40 species of fish have now played with these leaves. And everybody has really enjoyed them with the gobies and the uh, the shrimp and snails specifically just adoring them. So here you can see a schismatogobius or a dragon goby hanging out because he eats the critters that hang out on that leaf. So things like seed shrimp, scuds, and other life forms in your aquarium, paramecium, amoebas, they all hang out on this leaf. And I was asking myself, you know, why is so much life drawn to these leaves over, say, the almond leaves or other things that I've put in the aquarium in the past? I mean, look at this. This guy's still munching, not on this rock, but down there on, under the sand, the stiphodons are still munching on more leaves, and they're pretty shy. They don't really like being filmed up close unless they're busy doing something like that. Well, it has to do with the special properties of this plant and the bio uh, film that forms on these plants. The reason this biofilm is so diverse and rich and can form on these plants is because they are full, incredibly full of different nutrients. In fact, in Southeast Asia, this plant has been harnessed for both its fruit, its wood, uh, the color of the leaves being uh, soaked in water and then used as dye. If you've seen Buddhist monk robes that are that yellow color, yellowish brown, they're actually from jackfruit tree leaves uh, and the heartwood being soaked in uh, acidic water and then they soak the robes in it and wash it off and it stays as a dye. Now, the cool thing if you've watched my channel for a while is that you may know that dyes like methylene blue or victoria green malachite green or a lot of the yellow dyes in fact pretty much every yellow dye that's organic that we know of are anti-parasitical antibacterial and antifungal so a lot of little critters like to live on them because their colony doesn't mold it doesn't get attacked by bacteria and so these leaves they're not the best for the teeniest, tiniest life forms in your aquarium because quite frankly, the, the bacteria and the uh, fungi doesn't grow very well on it. These leaves don't rot per se very well. But the aufuchs and the protein-rich little microorganisms and films that form on these leaves is really incredible. And everyone from tetras to uh, my quarry catfish, to the shrimp, love them. So, I mean, I could say all the normal things that you would say about a leaf. They're a great habitat, they look cool, you could put them in a biotope tank, and obviously they're gonna lower the acidity, or, or increase the acidity, acidity, lower the pH of your aquarium over time, and that is a very desirable thing for a lot of people. You know, at under 6.0 uh, pH, you don't actually get ammonia anymore. It evaporates out of your aquarium. You also start to run into different issues with your nitrifying bacteria as well though. Check that out in Blackwater videos that I've done and you can learn all about the chemistry of it. But check out how many of my shrimp down here are out in the open, even with the quarries and the other fish, 
and they're pregnant and they're pregnant and they're doing well and they're growing fast and they have rich colors for clear little shrimp they have nice colors and it's i really think because of these leaves uh let me show you the difference between the color of the shrimps same species up here so these are clear i mean they're almost hard to even find they're they're so clear and the hump and their eggs are clearish and uh that's what the Malawa shrimp look like when they're wild and in a neutral tank with lots of plants. But in a black water tank that's slightly acidic and uh, full of tannins, they turn a nice ochre yellow and red color, as well as kind of that off clear color. So I know for a fact that the shrimps love these leaves and munch on them all day long. Now, what's the history of these uh, plants with humans? Well, the history of these plants with humans is that for over 7,000 years, humans have been keeping these trees in orchards, planting them in specific sacred places, and coming back year after year to harvest the fruit from them when it falls. So it falls several times a year, and it grows on these giant trees. And the trees can be well over 150 feet tall, well over 50 meters tall, and they're big, broad trees with fruits, no joke, up to 75 kilograms. That's like 150 pound fruits. They're the size of a 40 breeder aquarium. And they are tasty fruits as well, with seeds that are edible as well. So other than it being a tasty fruit and a good source of lumber, clearly, why else do uh, humans like this plant? Well, in the cultures that it exists in, from uh, Pakistan's border and Kashmir region, all the way up through the Himalayas, and all the way down to Sri Lanka, over to Micronesia, Australasia, uh, New Guinea, and uh, even Northern Australia now, as well as Malaysia, Thailand, and Bangladesh, well, the people love this tree and this fruit because it has a lot of medicinal properties. Now, I could say it has these medicinal properties and I have sources that members can check out in the community tab that will be listed my citations of studies that have been done. And it'd be cool if they were studies on humans because, I mean, you know, that's great. It means it works on humans. But would that mean that these leaves are that great for fish? And invertebrates? I mean, stuff that's not our direct relative? Well, turns out that these studies were pretty much all done first on either fruit flies or some sort of insect, you know, worms or something. Then they were done on either rice fish or little danios. So there are a ton of studies done on danios going back all the way to the 1930s, all the way until... I mean, just a few months ago, new studies were coming out about the wonders of this plant. So what can this plant do for your fish and invertebrates? Well, let's talk about that. What is it that the science says is going on in these plants? All right, so here we are in another planted tank. Not really much of any tannins have leached from this in the last four or five days since I put it in. But what is going on in this leaf? You can see sometimes they're a very light tan color and uh, you've seen the red, you've seen the brown. They come in a nice variety and that's really cool for the aquascaper in me. But what's in those? What's in the color? What's in this magical little leaf here? Well, it turns out there is a ton of vitamin A, E, potassium, and there are a ton of carotenoids. So the the vascular system of this plant actually carries along with the water obviously all the nutrients that the plant needs and these leaves maintain a very rigid vascular system even when they're dried they're actually extremely durable when they're cracker dry they still don't really they they bend more like a, a dollar or you know money or something rather than just cracking and shattering like a, a cracker or cookie would you get these tears in them but really you can bend them uh, quite a bit and they'll make the creaking noises and things but they go right back they are a very uh, sturdy plant and that's because they are so full of 
goodies. Now, they have something in them that actually causes collagen and various elastic uh, properties in cells to grow at a rate 30 to 40 time, 30 to 40 percent better than in other uh, plants. So when you uh, when you give this extract of this leaf or you grind this leaf up and feed it to uh, the fish, uh, and when I said extract, the reason they had to do the extract, it's not any stronger. It's not like two times or five times extract. It's just ground up because some fish didn't want to eat just straight up dry leaves, uh, being that they're carnivores and whatnot. But this plant showed that when they would actually injure their fins or have uh, either burns or cuts or scrapes on the fish, this plant, that collagen and elastic enhancer would allow their fins to heal 30 to 40 percent faster than the fish that were not eating these. And I think that's pretty cool. So beyond that, it also is just stock just chock full of carotenoids so I always put these leaves in and I'm going to in the future keep putting them in with all of you know my baby plecos my baby uh, fry of pretty much every species you can see these quarry uh, cat babies these are Venezuelan orange quarries they're already bright orange which is not the norm for this small of a baby I mean let's let's put my pinky up here this is a very teeny tiny quarry and because of this diet and a diet of brine shrimp as well, I would have to say, uh, they have a lot of protein and carotenoids that they normally wouldn't have, and they stay a lot brighter. Same with my ember tetras. They are just bright. Same with my jewel cichlids. So even in jewel cichlids where I've got a rift lake species, I've been putting these leaves in because of not the tannins or the acidity. In fact, I mitigate that by either boiling them or by uh, just not putting a ton in. And I just allow the, the critters in the tank to feed on them. So what I would do if I had a carnivore and what they did in the studies is they enriched uh, brine shrimp as well as other small things like Daphnia and uh, Neocaridina. These are Malawa shrimp, but same difference. They would enhance them by putting them in a tank with only jackfruit leaves. And the jackfruit leaves were their diet, but on those jackfruit leaves, they don't usually eat the leaf matter itself. That's not what the shrimp are eating. They're eating the bits of protein off the leaf that are growing in aufuchs and I have a whole video on aufuchs and what those are but here you can see a, another quarry that's not even a week old uh, or a week from hatching I should say out of its egg it is teeny compared to the other quarry and it even has orange color so I've never seen that before and I have to think that it's due to this I don't have any scientific proof of that but that's my uh, note that's what I've noticed so again when you look at this plant it's really leathery and tough but it lets it photosynthesize you can see it has all these pores and pockets and veins it lets it distribute nutrients across the plant even more effectively than most other trees and these are big trees so they need to have a lot of energy but another thing they store a ton of is potassium and potassium happens to be one of the things that's lacking in our aquarium plants very frequently and a lot of times you can't get potassium in an all-in-one uh, fertilizer or something like that without a bunch of nitrates and your fish are pooping and they already make nitrates so that's no fun I don't need them with nitrates. So the, this has things like thiamine, uh, niacine, carotenoids, uh, magnesium, and potassium, along with vitamin A and E. I mean, this, these are loaded leaves. And I just think it's so cool that humans figured out that they helped cuts and burns and scrapes and wounds heal. They prevented scarring, and they enhanced hair color, according to uh, South... Uh, South um, Eastern Indians uh, from the country of India that is but to the tribal groups there a lot of them use them in their sacred ceremonies they build uh, temples and thrones out of the wood and then they use uh, shapes from the leaves if not actually using swaths of the leaves themselves on the roof or in the fires and incense burners of the temples 
I mean, this plant is utilized for everything from insomnia to uh, uh, miscarriages, uh, healing after that. And it has a long tradition in a lot of different tribal cultures of being used. Now, I don't think it's any coincidence that all these different tribes used it and a lot of the things have to do with one another that they used it for. A lot of it had to do with wound care or healing or uh, the other major thing that we haven't discussed yet is the the potential they have in humans. Now, this hasn't been shown as much in fish, but it has been shown in fish. And it, that is that it regulates blood sugar. So they've found that some diabetic humans in studies have been able to get off insulin by chewing on these leaves several times a day or by taking an extract that's the same leaf but uh, a little more potent. But just merely the dried leaf, not the alkaloids processed from it, the actual tincture of the leaf. And in fish, it's believed that it helps them fast as well. So all the little things they're eating off the surface are basically like enriched little vitamins now and shrimp and snails and all the other goodies in your tank all up the food chain will eat off of that. They'll have better slime coats because of all the vitamins. They have better eye formation in fry and they eat the little teeny critters that are getting the nutrients out of the leaves and as the leaves are finely broken down once the antifungal antibacterial properties leach out and soak into your aquarium you finally end up with a leaf that will turn into a leaf skeleton and you'll turn into mulm at the bottom of the aquarium so this is a really neat leaf because it's being looked into everything from uh, a cure for insomnia uh, it's also being looked into for uh, relaxation, anti-anxiety effects, but more so for healing of skin and allowing skin grafts to take hold. It's being used already in a lot of aquaculture, so both in invertebrates and in fish. So, you know, things like crayfish and prawns, hatcheries, they're using this leaf. They're throwing bunches of them into the ponds so that the... Uh, creatures, the micro creatures that form on there and the protein layers that form on there will be eaten by those, uh, those crustaceans and invertebrates. And then they will, uh, basically become enriched, just like enriching brine shrimp with additives and chemicals. Now you want to make sure that you get these from a good source. You don't want them on the side of the road, you know, getting pollution all day. And you want them in good soil, obviously that's healthy, good volcanic soil, uh, they grow well in limestone soil uh, as well. And the other thing that they are known for is for soothing burns, obviously, like I said, and causing them to heal faster. But oddly enough, even though we think of it as a tannin that will make your water acidic, they're known for their ability to stop heartburn and to help cure stomach ulcers as well. So they will help heal stomach ulcers in humans and in fish alike in quite a bit faster time. Revol results may vary, but it was very st statistically significant. So for my money, this plant, this jackfruit leaf, is my new best buy for botanicals. You know, I think if you put these kind of things in your aquarium, if you research them, and if you make a balanced biotype, biotope, that has a little bit of wood, lots of plants, a good substrate mix, and then you've got, you know, a good source of your fish. Genetically, they're sound, and they're not filled with disease or anything when you get them. You get them from a trusted source, <clears throat> like Aquatic Arts. Uh, they will do really well in a tank where you've set them up for success. And if you're looking at breeding show-quality fish, and I'm talking bright reds. I'm talking anything from flower horns to arowanas. This may be the new secret that a lot of breeders are using and putting in their aquariums. Now, like I said, it takes a little bit of time for all those biofilms and proteins to become part of the ecosystem, part of the microflora and fauna, and then the fish can eat those, and as well as when the plant finally does deteriorate 
then it falls into the substrate and all those minerals that are left become part of the other plants that are alive. So it does take time and you can keep adding these leaves, you know, maybe two or three every month and they won't even yellow up your tank that much. And if they do, because your tank's already acidic or uh, maybe you just got a stronger batch, you know, leaves do vary depending on the batch. That's why I've tried several batches then all you need to do is boil them first. And yes, that does take some of the oomph out of them, but they are still very, very powerful, and they still are two to three times more powerful than Indian almond leaves comparatively. I mean, look at this. Look at how all the gobies are down here feeding on the hidden leaves. Even the plecos are. There's so much diversity of algae and protein layers and films that are in the leaves under here that they're hanging out and munching on. Uh, they use them to hide in and the shrimp love hanging out on them too. So this is one of my all time favorite little tricks to add to the aquarium. And I've just noticed an increased health and less dying fish zero fin problems, which with bettas, uh, you know, sometimes I spawn uh, quite a few bettas and I have quite a few in the same aquarium or same with gouramis. I've noticed no infections. No, I've had to use no antibiotics, no antiparasiticals, uh, and there have been no infections. I mean, like I said, even the cichlids from Africa that like uh, water that's more neutral to alkaline generally. Same with those super red uh, Turkana jewel cichlids over here. Even they actually seem to really benefit from just a couple of these leaves in the aquarium. So I want you to check out the research yourself. I want you to Google it and look up the incredible <laughs> uh, powers that are in this leaf. Uh, it's one of those superfoods. I hate that term usually, but it truly is one of the superfoods. And the fruit itself is pretty cool too, if you check that out. So I hope you guys will check it out. I hope you guys will maybe visit Aquatic Arts, pick some up, support them, pick up some healthy, happy fish, some cool, unusual fish, maybe some other cool botanicals like lotus pods. And you can use my code, which in my most recent video at any given time will always be up to date. But it does go out of date on videos, so if you're watching this and it's not December 2021 still, you may want to check uh, and double check that the code is still HISTORY SECRET, all caps, 15, that's 15, HISTORY SECRET 15, and that gives you 15% off anything on their site. And why am I promoting a bag of leaves. They've got lots of bags of leaves and other things and we'll talk about the benefits of these and and these and you know these and well these are the cinnamon leaves that also lasted forever and alder cones. I mean we'll talk about all of that in the future but for now I wanted to start with a big old long deep dive into jackfruit because there is a lot of really good scientific research that shows that this just isn't, it's not just made up or just slightly statistically significant. This is an incredible uh, additive for your aquarium. And while they're not selling food grade uh, at Aquatic Arts, and I'm not encouraging you guys to go out and chew on dry leaves, uh, it may be if you're diabetic or have a wound or a cut, it may be something to look into the actual fruit or the fresh leaves of this tree yourself. So I hope you enjoyed this deep dive video. And this has been Alex Williamson with The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. And again, I have to thank Aquatic Arts for sending me these and saying, try them out, say whatever is true about them, and uh, let us know which ones are good, which ones are bad, whatever, you know. And that's what I did. And, you know, I don't have a problem with any of them necessarily, but this is the very best one. Biggest bang for your buck. Get 25 of them for 15 bucks or cheaper than that, especially if you use the discount. And shipping is super light on them, so uh, that can help if you're doing a big order. All right, guys, I will talk to you later. Thanks for sticking around this long. It's been a deep dive into the tannins and the medical and magical properties, uh, if there's such a thing as magic, of jackfruit leaves. Thanks, guys. Bye.